I'm Jeff Carter with Seattle City Club. Today is part of the Civic Boot Camp on Women in Action Leadership Towards an Equitable Pandemic Economy. I'll be talking with Fatima Jamal, a current student at UW Bothell. Welcome, Fatima, and thank you for joining me. Hi. So please tell me, tell us a bit about who you are, where you're from, what year in school, what major, et cetera. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, Jeff, for having me here today. Um, my name is Fatima Jamal. I go by she, her pronouns. I'm in my last year of school at Utah Bothell. I'm majoring in management information system management with a minor in informational technology and public health. Um, a little bit about what I want to do in the future. I want to go into health administration, more in the public health side of things. Um, and then outside of academic studies, I have been a part of Achieving Community Transformation at Ida Bothell, where we do a lot of civic engagement programming. And then I've also been a part of the Washington Bus, which is a nonprofit organization in Seattle. And we help address problems that the community is facing and coming up with solutions and talking to policymakers. And then I'm also part of an organization right now called Afsana, which is a nonprofit organization as well, which helps fund and support women's education in Pakistan. Um, yeah. Wow, thank you. Uh, just, and I, I didn't put this in the original questions, but what, what motivates you to become such, be so civically involved and join all these groups and do these wonderful things? I think, um, so my first class, uh, I think my second year of public health studies, I took a class and they were talking about problems that the community faces. We actually went out and we helped the community. We went out and we were talking to community members, like what are some problems you're facing? And I think the biggest takeaway I got from that is not assuming what the community, community needs and actually asking them. And a lot of the times I feel like they don't focus on that enough. And so I wanted to get more involved and that's how I got involved in achieving community transformation. And I was able to address so many problems that I faced growing up, but I didn't know how to make a change or make an impact. Whereas now I had the resources to, and once you see the impact you have on even little small actions that you do, you don't wanna stop because you see the effect it's having and you see how many people and how many lives it's impacting. Can you can you talk about some of the challenges that you've um, you've helped people address um, mm -hmm. in your your civic engagement work? Yeah. So for Washington Bus, I was the um, community manager for Housing for All. So we actually went and talked to community members, especially with COVID, the pandemic. So many people lost their houses, and even college students too, because a lot of colleges, they had to shut down, they had to close dorms out, they didn't have another place to live or stay at. And so a lot of them ended up being homeless or not, have, like not having to live with like maybe friends or family, but it was very, very difficult. And um, especially in Seattle, we have such a huge problem with that. So we went, we talked to policymakers, we, we talked to people who were running for um, government and we talked to them, these are some of the problems that are happening. There's some solutions that we could do. Here are some ways that we could help. And we actually held like a community meeting. We had it open to public. Anyone could join. They could come and talk to us about their problems that they're facing. And it was just kind of an open dialogue with them where they could say any solutions that they think they have. And then with all of that, we went and presented that to upper people who are actually in power that can make a change in that field. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, and as a student, you mentioned uh, helping people dealing with uh, the issues from the pandemic, housing especially, but what, what, what have been the challenges that you faced as a student during this pandemic, financial and otherwise? Yeah. So at the beginning of the pandemic, my parents own a print shop and it's in Seattle. And because of the pandemic, it was shut down for a long time, almost like it was almost a full year. And it was a very long time. And for me trying to focus on studies when we had like bills to pay and I have a family of 12. So there's a lot of people and I'm the oldest daughter. So I had to take up extra shifts. I need to help pay bills because my dad was trying to look for another job or something that could help pay. But the store was shut down and that was our main source of income. So that was really hard. And then especially with mental health as well, because at the beginning of the pandemic, um, my aunt actually works at the hospital and she ended up getting COVID. And then we all got COVID from her. 
which was really, really scary. And with a family of 12, all of us having COVID, it was terrifying. That was at the beginning when we didn't know what it was, what exactly the effects would be. So it was really, really scary. And having to also study at the same time was really difficult for me. Yeah, it sounds like it. I, I hope you're all healed yeah, and, and all good now. And good and all have been vaccinated and vaccinated. all that. So. Yes, right when what, it came out, we were excited. <laughs> yeah. What What would you say are the challenges, the unique challenges that female students face on mm-hmm. campus? Yeah. So, like I said, I'm actually in the field of computer science, and it's a very, very male-dominated field. It's sometimes difficult to be heard or even stand out because they tend to really focus on male. It's a um, male-dominated area. So even if I'm doing job interviews for or something, I could tell they're looking for someone who looks like them or someone they feel like would fit the role more. So it was really hard to stand out. And But from that also, I could kind of go into it. From that, I feel like I learned to speak up. Like I was like, no, because I know how hard I worked in this field and I know how much knowledge I have in this. So I'm not going to stay quiet. I'm going to make sure I stand out and anything anyone else could do in that role, I could do as well. So I think that was huge. It is difficult. But I feel like from that experience, I did learn to step up a little bit more and speak a little bit louder and not be afraid of what anyone else is saying or thinking, because I know that I'm capable of doing that role as well. And, and what gives you the, um, the courage to speak up? when you're in the minority in several ways? Yeah, because when I first went into it, I could tell everyone else, like a lot of, like even my class, right? It was very much males. Like there was probably like three girls counting myself in the class. And I was like, I was trying to get my voice heard and I could tell that the other people over there were kind of looking down on me. And it was really irritating to me. And I didn't like that. And I'm the type of person who's curious. I have a lot of questions. So, and I would be nervous to ask questions in class because what if they're like, oh, because she's asking questions, she doesn't know. But it's like, no, I know my stuff, but I just want to clarify or I want to get to know more about it or more detail about it. And I think once you start doing it, once you slowly start going out of your comfort zone, you stop caring what other people are thinking because you know you and you know how good you could do right if you do if you ask questions and you could see that with the success or the progress that you're making at the end too Mm, that's excellent Mm -hmm. um when you look at kind of your career aspirations and even the field you're you're in now Mm -hmm. do you see what are the challenges in terms of like gender equity and inequity as it may be yeah um i feel like kind of this thing I feel like when I was going into college, it's it was really hard to even find like a role model or someone who looked kind of like me kind of going into the tech field, right? And that's kind of what I was interested in at first. And it was really hard. And I was like, am I able to pursue that? Would I be able to? And it was a lot of kind of going back and forth with myself if I was even capable of doing that. And I feel like that's the number one reason why we need more women representation in these fields. Um, And I think also making sure that people aren't looking down on women and being like, oh, you can't do this. Like when people say that, that I feel like that creates a drive in me now. Like once you say I can't do it, I'm like, no, now I have to do it. Now I have to show you I could do this because anything anyone else could do, you could do too, right? So setting my mind to it and going for it and not being scared of what's gonna happen. Um, what, what would you say are any positive kind of impacts or outcomes from, from your experience, um, either through your civic engagement work or at, as a student? Mm-hmm. I feel like I have learned to find my voice. I have learned that I could make an impact. I have learned how to how to step up and just be true to myself, I guess, because I feel like growing up, I was such a shy kid. I was so scared. I'd be scared to go out of my comfort zone. And through the engagement that I did and through all the volunteering opportunities I did, through the leadership roles I did, I feel like I discovered so much about myself that I didn't even know. And I was so glad to even um meet other people right 
meet other people that inspire me, inspire me to do more, inspire me to grow. And I think that also it helped me know what I want to do in the future, help me realize the impact I want to have on people. And so that's our like health administration. I want to be able to help people. I like hearing people. I like talking to them. I like hearing about their stories, seeing how I could help them as well. And do you think what what would have been the, do you think the silver linings, if any, of the pandemic in, in your kind of experience as a student or just in life? I feel like, I guess, one thing is never take anything for granted, for sure, because life is so different now. Um, but also, I did get to spend a lot of time with my family, which normally you, I wouldn't be able to because I was always going back and forth with work, school, and being busy all the time. So I got to spend a lot of time with my family and just taking it in because you're not going to get this time again. And I think I realized that just to slow down and be grateful for everything you have. And then also just appreciate the little things that come your way. Because now I'm just like, I'm so glad to be able to see people again and go out of the house even just to see people. I think that was huge. Mm -hmm. um, in this boot camp, the Civic Boot Camp series, we're, we're highlighting women leaders. Um, mm -hmm. Why do you think it's important to highlight and recognize the contributions of women leaders in our community? I think the biggest thing is also so little girls, they have a role model, they have someone they can look up to. And if they see people who look like them doing stuff that are huge, that are making an impact, they're going to want to do it, too. They're not going to be afraid. And how I was afraid, I didn't see a lot of people, um, a lot of women when I was growing up making an impact or people that I could relate to that I knew closely that I could talk to. Right. But when other girls, they see that they're going to be so inspired to do the same, to help others and to not be afraid of anything and not let anyone, anyone else says, put them down. And so like, even for myself, I, I hope to one day be like a role model for younger girls to be able to help them. Like even with my organization right now with Afsana, we do like video chats with little girls in Pakistan and we talk to them. They ask us all these questions. They're like, oh, how is college there? How is this? And how is that? And it's so exciting seeing them get so excited and they'll tell us about their education, about their school. We're helping build a school there right now. And so they're always telling us how excited they are. And just seeing their smile and seeing that they see us doing it and they're like, oh, one day I want to do that too. That makes me so happy even just hearing it and seeing their smile on their face because they're so excited that they could even picture themselves doing what we're doing right now. Hmm. That's excellent. Um, what, do you, what, what role do you think um, women leaders play in our community as we, as we kind of respond to this pandemic? Um, mm -hmm. So I was talking about this earlier, but I think that the biggest thing was when the vaccine came out, there wasn't a lot of education specifically from men leaders. It was more so from women leaders. And I wish it was from both sides, but women leaders were so helpful. They were trying to educate people on the impact and also the health, the impacts that it has on health too. And I think that's huge because the um, vaccine, it's very helpful, but women should be able to know the impact it's gonna have on their body. They should be able to prepare for it as well. And I think also women leaders help. I feel like um, also just educating people in their community, letting them know about the vaccine, the impacts, how to stay safe and how to take care of others around you as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As, a, as a student leader yourself, um, what advice would you give to other students who want to get involved, but don't know where to start or, or where, to, where to go? Yeah, I think don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone. In school, there's going to be so many opportunities getting involved. And don't say no to that. Even if you're nervous or scared, you're going to go alone or something. Grab a friend or even if you go alone, I'm telling you, like, I promise you, you will make friends along the way, like lifelong friends. And you're going to see, even if you go to one, you'll see the impact that you have on people around you, on the community. And 
once you start, you're not going to want to stop because you're going to want to continue helping people. You're going to want to continue putting a smile on other people's faces and you're going to be so proud of yourself. And I feel like that gives life meaning, right? Helping other people and seeing the impact you have and making the world a better place for everyone. And I think that is huge. And also, I think when you get involved right now, while you're in school, you're going to have lifelong connections with even the organizations that you meet. So I think that is huge. And it's going to help you put you out of your comfort zone and find your voice like how I did. I was able to find my voice, which I didn't even know I could do because I was so shy. And I think that's the biggest thing. And you're going to have something that you can look back on and say you're proud of. You could say that you're proud of the actions that you did uh, while you were in school or even after. Well, that's great advice. Thank you so much, Fatima. I really appreciate your taking the time to talk to me today and and, um, really am in admiration of all that you do and how you've you've kind of pushed through this pandemic and still have a smile on your face. And uh, it's really impressive. And um, uh, good luck in all your your future endeavors. And I'm sure you'll be successful because you already are. So thanks again. Um, I also have to thank Alaska Airlines, our Civic Bootcamp sponsor. So thank you to Alaska. And um, that's it. Um, Thank you again and have a great day. Awesome. Thank you, Jeff, so much. Thank you for having me here today.